For us, it is an honor to have you around here. Our wish is that the secrets of the sages of ancient India, taught by the renowned Yogi Sadguru, be a powerful tool of self-transformation in your inner journey. Get to know our yoga course by clicking on the link that is in the description of this video and learn more. To whatever your state of mind has been from your childhood to now, need not be the state of your mind for the rest of your life. Find something that you're passionate about, you need to develop some intensity of attention will naturally come. The easiest thing to do is change the framework of our mind. See, when it comes to physical body and the mind, no two human beings have come with the same capabilities, isn't it? Hmm? Physically, mentally, what one human being can do, another human being cannot do, it's in so many different ways. So instead of getting a title that I'm attention deficiency, I'm ADD, ABC, XYZ, <laughs> so many things. <laughs> The thing is, how to maximize who you are, isn't it? You have attention deficiency, but I had another kind of problem, I had too much attention. <laughs> if I pay attention to this one, I can't shift my attention to this, I'm just looking at this only for hours. <laughs> that also people thought is a problem. People thought it is a problem, he's just looking at one thing all the time. <laughs> I remember this situation so well, it was so insane. You know, my father is uh, academically excelled all his life, but unfortunately, he produces a son like me, <laughs> who has no concern about academics of any kind. So he thinks he's a very strict disciplinarian and evenings, seven to nine, every day in the evening, we must all, the four siblings, all of us must study Tch, textbook. I pick up some textbook because it doesn't matter for me what. <laughs> and I open somewhere. I don't care which page, I just open some page and I, s I find some small speck on the page, a tiny speck, some flaw in the paper. I just look at that, that's about it. It just grabs my attention in such a way, I just sit there two hours just looking at this speck. I don't read a single word. But I never looked up and looked here and there because it really held my attention. Two hours I'm just looking at the speck because there is so much in a bloody speck, you know? There's an entire world in a speck. People have spent their lifetimes looking after microscopic molecule or an atom, isn't it? Speck is much bigger than an atom. So, People thought I was going crazy because I had too much attention. So, don't go on labeling yourself this and that. Who… who decides you have attention deficiency? Huh? Is there some standard how much attention you must have <laughs> or how much attention you must get? There is no such standard anywhere, isn't it? You're making it up. The problem is, uh, right from childhood, children are labeled and they are supposed to carry this label for the rest of their life. 
what level of attention you have at five, what level you may have at six, at seven, at eight, at fifteen or twenty, can be entirely different. Haven't many of you evolved through this process? Huh? Haven't you? First day school you couldn't figure a damn thing, maybe later on you did well, or maybe first day you looked like you understood everything, by the end of the year you did nothing. Yes or no? <clears throat> you… you're a young man, there are girls in the neighborhood <laughs> hmm? I'm a mechanical engineer, so… No, that's okay <laughs> I'm… I'm a mechanical engineer <laughs> Are there girls in the neighborhood, I asked? No, engineers generally tend to have uh, neighborhoods which do not have a lot of girls, so <laughs> They must be moving away for some reason <laughs> Where does this come from, mechanical engineer? <laughs> mechanical in the head. So, you're at a certain age, now you get drawn to somebody, you don't have to concentrate, isn't it? Hello? <laughs> you don't have to concentrate. They will invade. <laughs> so it is only a level of interest. If you have a deep level of interest in something, Attention will come, why will it not come? You still have not found any interest in anything. I don't know which part of the mechanics you're handling in London <laughs> I heard the clock is not working <laughs> So, if you become profoundly drawn to something, why will you not have attention? Attention will come. Do I have as much attention as somebody else? Maybe not. I never had any attention for what was happening in the classroom, but I didn't find that interesting. I was… but my attention was in all kinds of things. Does it mean to say I don't have a… I have attention deficiency? No, I'm not interested in what they're putting up on the blackboard. That's all. <laughs> so right now, unfortunately, all the girls have moved out of the neighborhood. <laughs> so you have attention deficiency Find something that you're passionate about, attention will come. Why will it not come? Not necessarily what I said, just anything <laughs> I'm taking that example of a girl because there is a chemical support <laughs> Yes, there is a chemistry working for your attention. Other things need little more effort to pay attention to <laughs> You need to develop some intensity of passion, that's something that is important. What you think is important, <laughs> if this comes into your perspective, attention will naturally come. I know others will say other things, but what I am telling you is, whatever your state of mind has been from your childhood to now, need not be the state of your mind for the rest of your life. The easiest thing to do is change the framework of our mind, isn't it? Hmm? To change the framework of our body is very difficult. To change the framework of our mind is the easiest thing to do because that is the most flexible thing, but that you have made it like a concrete block. What do you want to use your head for? Just head butting? 
<laughs> you must keep this as flexible as possible, isn't it? Hello? You have made this into a con concrete block, what is the intention? That's why I think so many are… S I mean, the, the such passionate football fans, the only <laughs> thing that you appreciate is this <laughs> That is also a good thing when it's done well, but head can be used for many more things and you can do many more things only if you keep it completely fluid and flexible. Otherwise, a concrete block is useful only for certain things. So it doesn't matter what labels they put on you. If you wish, you can change the structure of your mind. Pretty awesome. So I believe Sadhguru would like to start with some chanting. <laughs> I need to cross my legs so like my brain <laughs> Jananam Sukadam Maranam Karunam Milanam Maduram Smaranam Karunam Kalevashadiha Sakalam Karunam Samayadipate Akilam Karunam Namaskaram. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. That was amazing. Oh, man. Thank you. Without the only way out is in. Yes, truly, I believe that. Why <laughs> well, you got a big voice and my microphone is not working. Oh, he just had the great voice, this guy. The great voice. <laughs> great voice. <laughs> May we um, begin? How is it? Is your mic okay? As long as it's not about, I'm okay. okay. There it is. <laughs> there it is. So tell me, um, what do you think you're here for? What would you think I would want to talk to you about? I'm sure you did research on me, my life and who I am and all that stuff. But what would you think I want to talk to you about? What would you think I would want to listen to you for? The first guys in the world get beaten by life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you said that was easy, huh? That was so easy, huh? Wow. All my life I thought I was this tough guy. Even recently I was talking about if they say something, I'll blow it. And I, and I do all this stuff all my life because I'm afraid. And if you tell me what I'm afraid of, I can't even tell you what. Why am I afraid? I'm successful, I'm, you know, I had some hard times, but I came back, but why am I afraid? Mm -hmm. We need to understand this. Uh, this has been hugely misinterpreted and misunderstood on various dimensions, whether it's fear or love or anger, or joy. We need to understand it's not about something, it's by itself. 
it is not that there must be something that you must be afraid of. It is not that it, there must be somebody that you are in love with. It is not that you are happy about something or miserable about something. You can be simply miserable. Hello? Ticks? <laughs> or uh, you can be simply happy. You can simply sit here just by yourself and be very loving. You can sit here and be terrified about nothing. Because human experience is not created from outside. Human experience is happening from within. So what happens from within may sometimes find outside stimulus. But you can work it even without external stimulus. Hello? All of you are experts, aren't you? <laughs> without any external stimulus, you can create pain, you can create joy, you can create misery, you can create anger, love, fear, whatever you want. Because the seat of experience is within you. Only thing is you are not sitting there, you are crawling around it. You are supposed to be sitting there on the seat. If you are sitting on the seat of your experience, you would decide what should be the nature of your experience. Right now because you are crawling around, something happens accidentally. We find an excuse, it's because of this guy I am suffering. Even if he's not there, we would find somebody else. Hello? <laughs> if that guy is not there, we'll find somebody else. If that is not there, we'll find something else. So, this is not about something. This is about that you have not taken charge of the seat of your experience, that's all. You just need an excuse. And the world will, of course, the world is quite enthusiastic about providing you the excuses. <laughs> it will. <laughs> they will provide lots of excuses. <laughs> but believe me, if you were alone in the desert, you would still go through all these things without anybody around you, without any threat to your life. Yes or no? So, this is the fundamental flaw with life. Instead of fixing myself, I want to fix the whole world. Well, do what you want. You can't even fix one more person absolutely in your life. Hello? Hundred percent? Did you get anybody ever just the way you want one hundred percent? Did you? Even they are telling me even robotic machines have their own characteristics, they do their own thing. <laughs> even if you have a dog these days, they do their own thing. Yes, because you couldn't fix anybody, that's why you try to settle with a dog. But even that guy does his own thing. You can never fix anything outside of you hundred percent. If at all, if you're looking for that kind of success, hundred percent, you can only try with this guy. Try anybody else, you will fail. Yes or no? Hello? Try anybody, you will definitely fail. There's only one. This one, you could do him hundred percent the way you want. If you manage this one the way you want, where is the question of fear, suffering, misery, all this? This is not because of situations. This is because of the state we are in. Because no investment has been made for the being. First of all, we must decide, are we human beings or are we human creatures? The difference between a creature and a being is, a creature is a consequence of compulsive reactions to everything around us, that's a creature. A being means you know how to be. If you knew how to be, 
would you be blissed out or would you make yourself fearful or miserable or what? What's your choice? You must choose, I'm going to bless you just now. <laughs> Definitely, highest level of pleasantness, isn't it, for yourself? What you want for your neighbor may be debatable, but what you want for yourself is very clear, highest level of pleasantness. Why such a simple thing is hap not happening? It is not happening because uh, you know, we gave you a very complex machine. Peak of evolution on this planet is you. Hmm? If you were an earthworm, you wouldn't have these problems. Just eating, sleeping, reproducing, dying, you are fine. You're doing great as a creature, but you became human. Now it's a very complex machine, but you don't even bother to read the user's manual. Simply somehow you want to do it. Such a complex machine, if you try to do it somehow, accidentally, oh, it will cause much pain. Unable to bear pain, most people have given up on joy and moving towards pleasure. You must understand this. The need for entertainment and pleasure in the world has increased simply because there is no joy. If really human beings were joyful, they would not need so much entertainment and pleasure in their life. Pleasure becomes a compulsion. When there is no joyfulness and if you don't cause pleasure with something or the other, pain is just waiting in the background, just there. So, fear is not about something. Fear is just your inability to manage your thoughts. They are running away ahead of you. Fear is always about something that's yet to happen, isn't it? Yes. So that means you are suffering something that does not exist. If you suffer something that does not exist, there are medically very bad terms for that. It's not about one human being. It's just literally ninety-nine percent of the human population is in this condition, different levels maybe. But ninety-nine percent of the human population is in this condition, they are suffering things which do not exist. What happened ten years ago, they still suffer. What may happen day after tomorrow, they already suffer. What happened ten years ago does not exist right now. What may happen day after tomorrow does not exist right now. But things that don't exist, they suffer simply because two major faculties, two major faculties that you have which sets you apart distinctly from other creatures is, you have a very vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of imagination. These two faculties, which are the best things you have, this is what most human beings are suffering. They are suffering their memory and they are suffering their imagination. These are the greatest tools you have. So, what should have been the most fantastic well-being? When I say well-being, you know Charles Darwin, that guy, the English guy? Hello? He said, all of you were monkeys, not me. He <laughs> that all of you are monk were monkeys and you became human. So uh, essentially, on this planet, you are the peak of evolution. You agree with me or no? Yes. Hmm? Yes. So if you are the peak of evolution. That means uh, you have come with the highest level of faculties. Because there are so many possibilities of being human, because your life is not fixed like that of a creature. When I say not fixed like a creature, for every other creature nature has drawn two lines within which they live and die. The reason why an animal's life looks so much simpler and better is because there are no possibilities. So what human beings are suffering is their possibilities. 
if you destroy the possibilities, you will also be fine. If you want, we can have a portion of your brain removed. You will be so peaceful, you will not know fear, you will not know suffering, you will not know anxiety, you will not know nothing. Yes. All we have to do is take away the possibilities. With the possibilities, the problems are also gone. So right now the problem is the fantastic possibilities that have been invested in us. So to take away the possibility, either we can remove your brain or we can soak, soak it in whiskey, both ways you can do it. You take away the faculties, then you're okay. So, the problem is just this, that when you're given something so complex, you need to spend a certain amount of time knowing the nature of the machine that you're using. See, some people are ha ha handling these cameras. That's not a spacecraft. It is simple enough machine. But I'm sure these guys have spent years trying to know it the best. Just any of you get there and do it, what will happen out of it? Just see a simple machine like a camera. Yes or no? Somebody invested their life. The better they know it, the better they use it. Is it so? Hello? Yes. Why is that not true with this? The better you know this, the better you use it, isn't it? <laughs>